Auf mein Zeichen! Schieß jetzt! Kursk ist unsere letzte Chance! Wir das Reich müssen die Sowjets aus dem Kursk-Vorsprung verdrängen! Wir werden bald wieder die Kontrolle übernehmen! The stage is set for a showdown like no other. The German forces, specifically the infamous SS Panzer Division Das Reich, are gearing up for a battle that will be etched in the annals of history. But what made Das Reich stand out in the Battle of Kursk was their formidable weapon of choice, the mighty Tiger Tanks. These behemoths of steel and firepower were a game changer on the Eastern Front, and Das Reich knew how to wield them to their advantage. The Tiger I, armed with its lethal 88mm gun, was a nightmare for Soviet armor. Its thick armor plating made it nearly impervious to most enemy fire, and its powerful gun could knock out a T-34 and the KV-1 from a distance. But it wasn't just the tanks themselves, it was how Das Reich used them strategically that made all the difference. They formed a fearsome spearhead, pushing deep into the Soviet lines and creating chaos among the Red Army. But this was no walk in the park. The Soviets had their own ace up their sleeves, with a massive defensive line and their own formidable tanks. It was a clash of titans that shook the very ground beneath them. So get your helmets on and buckle up. Welcome back to History at War, the channel where we uncover history. The Tiger Company from the 2nd SS Das Reich Panzer Grenadier Division received orders to move swiftly to the front lines at Kursk, marking a critical chapter in the company's history. This formidable company, under the command of SS Hauptsturmführer Herbert Zimmermann, was comprised of 14 Tiger tanks, the epitome of German heavy armored warfare. Preparations for their engagement were meticulous. The Tigers, renowned for their devastating firepower and impregnable armor, were given new designations. Each tank was now emblazoned with a distinctive S, signifying Schwere, or heavy, a testament to their role as the Schwere Panzer Company, and a stark reminder of the raw power they brought to the battlefield. On July 4th, the company had 12 operational Tigers, as two were still undergoing repairs. SS Obersturmbannführer Albin Freiherr von Reitzenstein, in command of SS Panzer Regiment II, issued orders for the impending battle on the eve of the fight. The Heavy Tiger Company was tasked with leading the regiment into the Battle of Kursk. At 11 p.m., the Tigers began their slow journey toward the deployment zone, reaching it by 2 a.m. on July 5, 1943 following a heavy artillery bombardment of the Soviet positions. Around 4 a.m. under the cover of the still dark Kursk morning, SS Hauptsturmführer Zimmermann, the resolute leader of the Tiger Company, issued his orders to advance with utmost caution. In his formidable Tiger tank, coded as S-01, Zimmermann exemplified the spirit of the Schwer Panzer Company, with a thunderous command of, Panzers, march! Echoing through the tank's intercoms, the Tiger Company set their steel beasts into motion. The initial advance, however, was far from a leisurely stroll across the open plains. The Tiger Company was immediately met with a barrage of heavy Soviet artillery fire originating from the west bank of the Worskla stream and the dense Shirolini forest. The deafening roar of explosions and the acrid scent of cordite filled the air as Zimmermann's Tigers advanced through the cauldron of battle. As the Tigers pressed on, they were not alone in their struggles. Other panzers from the SS Panzer Regiment II, moving alongside the Tiger Company, faced their own difficulties. The rugged terrain, riddled with craters from artillery strikes and strewn with the remnants of earlier battles, posed a formidable challenge. Tanks became temporarily bogged down, tracks struggling to find traction in the churned-up earth. Yet the crews persevered, working together to navigate the harsh landscape. By 10 a.m. the next day, the Tigers, with SS Hauptsturmführer Herbert Zimmermann's S001 at the helm, had made considerable progress and reached a formidable hill that the Soviets had fortified as a key defensive position. This hill loomed large, its trenches bristling with enemy soldiers and artillery, presenting a daunting challenge for the advancing German forces. Panzer Grenadiers, valiantly supported by the Tigers, were tasked with the arduous mission of clearing the entrenched enemy from this formidable obstacle. The assault on the hill commenced around 10.30 a.m. as the first Grenadiers boldly entered the trenches, with the Tigers' massive presence providing both cover and firepower. The battlefield echoed with the cacophony of warfare, with explosions and gunfire filling the air. Progress was slow and hard-fought, 
but by noon, the combined might of the Tigers and the 3rd Battalion SS Panzer Grenadier Regiment Der Führer had breached the enemy defenses, reaching the coveted hill 220.5. The advance continued, and by 1.30 p.m., the strategic town of Beresov fell into German hands. The day's successes had not come without cost, as both men and machines bore the scars of relentless combat. An hour and a half later, as the clock neared 3 p.m., Zimmermann's Tiger Company had pressed on relentlessly, covering approximately five kilometers of treacherous terrain and nearing Hill 233.3. The first platoon, under the command of SS Obersturmführer Philipp Theiss, led the charge at the forefront of the advance. As they approached Hill 233.3, the first platoon found themselves face to face with a dug-in Soviet T-34 tank detachment. The battlefield erupted in a furious exchange of fire, with Zimmermann's Tiger, S-11, and its 80 enomitered gun proving their devastating efficiency. In a matter of minutes, one T-34 was reduced to a blazing inferno, and another met a similar fate at the hands of a second Tiger. However, the battle was far from over. On the horizon, several dozen more T-34 tanks appeared their formidable silhouettes advancing toward the Tigers at a distance of approximately 1,000 meters. For the next hour, the battlefield resounded with the thunderous roar of battle as the Tigers engaged the Soviet armor, as 12 more Soviet tanks were reduced to smoldering wrecks. Eventually, the Soviet tanks retreated, leaving around 20 of their armored behemoths strewn across the battlefield. By 4 p.m., Hill 233.3 was firmly in German hands, a testament to the unwavering determination and valor of Zimmermann's Tiger Company. As the sun began its descent, the 2nd SS Panzer Corps headquarters issued the order for a general halt to the day's advance by 9 p.m. The battle-worn Tigers, their crews exhausted but resolute, took stock of their achievements on that grueling day. As the sun began to rise on July the 6th, 1943, the resolute soldiers of the Das Reich Division prepared to resume their offensive against the well-entrenched Soviet defenses. At 4.30 a.m., the order to advance was given, and the thunderous rumble of tanks filled the morning air. The Das Reich Division, determined and battle-hardened, managed to breach the second defensive line southeast of Yakovlevo. By 11.25 a.m., Hill 246.3, a critical strategic point, was wrested from Soviet control thanks to the relentless efforts of the Der Fuhrer Panzergrenadier Regiment. This achievement marked a significant step forward in the day's progress. With the capture of Hill 246.3, the Panzers once again joined the fray, their heavy armor and devastating firepower providing invaluable support. The Schwerer Panzer Company, led by SS Hauptsturmführer Herbert Zimmermann, embarked on their advance toward Hill 232. However, the unforgiving battlefield exacted its toll. Zimmermann, the indomitable commander of the Tiger Company, was forced to abandon his Befehlstiger SO-1 due to a damaged undercarriage. Undeterred, he pressed on in Tiger SO-2, determined to lead his men to victory. During the advance, a Soviet armored train suddenly appeared on the scene, its heavy guns menacingly trained on the Tigers. The situation seemed dire until the skies were filled with the distinctive scream of Stuka dive bombers, their precision strikes eventually silencing the armored train's deadly guns. The remaining operational Tigers pushed forward, reaching Lutsky, but there was no respite in sight. T-34 tanks from the 26th Guards Tank Brigade emerged from the dust and smoke of battle, their barrels swiveling toward the German Tigers. In the midst of this deadly confrontation, Tiger S-02, with Zimmermann on board, was struck, and the decision was made to evacuate. On July 7, 1943, the renewed offensive along the belgorod kursk orel railway line saw a total of five or six operational Tigers, some having been repaired during the night. The attack kicked off at 3.30 a.m., and within three hours, the hamlet of Tater-Ravino fell into German hands. The Tigers efficiently neutralized several T-34 tanks spotted on the right front. Around 10 a.m., SS Hauptsturmführer Herbert Zimmermann, while issuing orders with characteristic resolve, was gravely injured by a shell explosion. His evacuation became necessary due to severe arm wounds. 
SS Obersturmbahnführer Freiherr von Reitzenstein swiftly appointed SS Hauptsturmführer Karl Heinz Lorenz, his adjutant, as the new commander of the Tiger Company. By 10.30 a.m., more Soviet tanks emerged near Kalinin. Approximately 30 tanks approached from the west, and Lorenz promptly assumed command from Tiger S-24. Noon saw the Soviet assault effectively repelled, with the remaining Soviet tanks retreating northward. The three surviving Tigers claimed an additional 12 enemy tanks. With the new threat vanquished, Lorenz led the Tigers forward in a formation, with Tiger S-24 on the left, Lorenz's Tiger in the middle, and the third Tiger on the right. However, as Tiger S-24, the lead tank, reached the crest of the railway line's slope, it suffered a devastating blow. An entrenched anti-tank gun struck heavily on the left side of the turret. Tragically, Lorenz was fatally hit in the head by the anti-tank round, and passed away within the confines of his Tiger. In just a mere two hours, the Schwer Panzer Company of the 2nd SS Das Reich Division had lost two commanders. SS Obersturmführer Philipp Theiss, commander of the 1st Platoon, stepped up to take command of the battered company. The once potent force had been significantly depleted with only a handful of Tigers remaining from the initial 12 that had embarked on the Kursk offensive just two days earlier. By approximately 4 p.m., the Das Reich Division clashed with several Soviet tanks near Yasnaya Polyana. As night descended upon the battlefield, they finally crossed the railway line at the station of Belenekino. Thais, now in charge, had only one operational Tiger left, a testament to the brutal attrition and unyielding determination that had defined their relentless push through the Kursk battlefield. The relentless advance continued the next day as the Das Reich Division pressed onward toward Kochetovka. At this juncture, the Soviet High Command had summoned reserves to stem the relentless push of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps. A major clash between tanks erupted near Tetaravino and Kochetovka, resulting in the destruction of numerous Soviet tanks, a testament to the Tiger's formidable firepower. On the 9th, after four grueling days of almost continuous combat, the heavy panzer company of the Das Reich Division was withdrawn from the immediate front lines, allowing much-needed recuperation and essential repairs. The diligent repair efforts bore fruit, and by July 10, 1943, the Schwerer Panzer Company was back in action with nine operational Tigers, ready to support the division's northeastward advance. However, the situation on the right flank of the Das Reich Division was less promising as the 3rd Panzer Corps found itself bogged down. This left the flank of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps vulnerable, and the responsibility of defending this exposed flank fell upon the shoulders of the Das Reich Division in the following days, diverting their focus from Prokhorovka. By July 11th, the Tiger Company was down to just one operational Tiger. The incessant combat had exacted a heavy toll, with many Tigers succumbing to mechanical failures on the 10th and 11th of July. Despite the intense battles faced by the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, the 2nd SS Das Reich Division found itself with comparatively lighter duty as they defended the right flank on the 12th of July. The Soviets had suffered significant losses in tanks, primarily at the hands of the 1st SS Leibstandarte Division. Yet, Prokhorovka remained firmly in Soviet hands. By nightfall on the 12th, the Tiger Company was left without any operational Tigers. On the 13th, the Soviets continued to apply pressure on the German salient south of Prokhorovka, even as repair crews labored tirelessly to bring damaged Tigers back into fighting shape. Four Tigers were deemed ready for combat by the following day, and these four Tigers played a pivotal role in the eastward advance. By 5 p.m., Ivanovka had fallen into German hands after fierce combat, and an hour and a half later, Hill 234.9 also came under German control. The Das Reich Panzers became embroiled in a ferocious battle two kilometers west of Shilomosnoy, near Hill 242.1, and this relentless fighting continued until the midnight hour, marking yet another grueling chapter in their arduous journey through the unforgiving landscape of the Kursk battlefield. By the time July 15, 1943 arrived, the Tiger Company of the Das Reich Division had managed to field eight combat-ready Tigers, a welcome reinforcement, as they pressed onward toward Hill 242.7. This location was strategically significant, serving as an ideal starting point for future assaults. However, their advance ground to a halt at Provoro, 
where the Tigers encountered a formidable array of well-fortified T-34 tanks. The Tigers, undeterred by the staunch Soviet defenses, maneuvered east of Vinogradovka. Tragically, during the intense battle that unfolded, SS Obersturmführer Philipp Tice's Tiger took a direct hit on the turret from an anti-tank gun, resulting in the heavy tank company commander's untimely demise. Remarkably, in just a span of 10 days, the Tiger Company of the Das Reich Division had witnessed the loss of three commanders, a stark illustration of the ferocity and relentless nature of the Kursk battlefield. During the course of the day's combat, all officers and tank commanders had either been killed or wounded, and two Tigers were immobilized. It was under these dire circumstances that SS Obersturmfuhrer Reininghaus assumed command of the beleaguered and depleted company. By July 16th, Reininghaus had managed to scrape together five operational Tigers, all positioned defensively as the Battle of Kursk neared its somber conclusion. The line held by the 2nd SS Das Reich Division was ultimately handed over to the 167th Infantry Division, signaling the end of their arduous frontline service. The Battle of Kursk, though marked by their success in neutralizing approximately 50-plus Soviet tanks while losing only a few Tigers, had extracted a heavy toll on the Tiger Company of the Das Reich Division. The true cost of this grueling battle lay not only in the material losses but also in the sacrifices made by the experienced tank crews and commanders who had valiantly led the Tigers into battle, and the massive loss of the Soviet defenders. And that concludes this riveting chapter of Das Reich. We trust you found it not only captivating, but also enlightening. This battle was nothing short of sheer intensity, a brutal struggle that took a heavy toll on both the Soviet and German forces. Let us take a moment to remember and honor all those who lost their lives. Rest in peace to all. Remember to check out our Patreon for much more exclusive content and our Instagram below. Thank you for all your continued support. We will see you guys soon.